Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with Mike Toth as we continue stepping through the book of Mark one verse at a time. Today, chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. You know, we've seen throughout the Bible and in this account of Mark that Jesus uses illustrations so that we can understand things that are heavenly. He uses parables so we can get an idea about heaven. And then he says things about hearing. You know, if you have ears to hear, listen that spiritual things, not so much the earthly things, to listen to the spiritual things that are happening. And then we had the illustration of a story that was true, where a man was healed of blindness. And the people that took this man, they went to another town, they could see, they bring him to Jesus to be healed. And in this town, Jesus had done so many healings that, uh, and they still didn't believe. So they bring the man to Jesus to touch him, and he he doesn't get healed. Jesus takes that man by the hand. He walks him out of the town and he brings him out. He takes away his sins and he heals him. And what do we see in this illustration? The people who could see could not see the spiritual kingdom of God. And in fact, Jesus warns them, woe unto you. But unto the man that was blind, he could see the spiritual kingdom and he sends him away to his own town, not to go back to them because they were spiritually blind. And the reason I bring this up is a lot of people read the Bible with one thing intent to do, to destroy the Bible, to prove it is wrong. Now, I've gone through this whole uh, thing up to chapter almost 11 here, and there's no really disagreements on anything. But on this, some skeptics, some blind people, spiritually, have said, aha, there's an error in the Bible because... Luke and Mark only talk about one blind person being healed. But Matthew talks about two blind people being healed. Aha! The Bible's no good. You could throw it out because of that error. You've got to be kidding me, number one. And number two is you're going to get different accounts, which is expected from different writers, unless they were copying from each other. And this is proven out. Just if today, if you imagine, I don't know if you know who Ted Bundy was, but he's probably one of the most um, famous serial killers. If he was arrested with another person, some people wouldn't even account for the other person that he got arrested with. That's not surprising. You know, because he's the big marquee name. They're going to know who he is. That's going to sell the newspapers, and that's going to get attention. In addition to that, they're writing to different uh, audiences. Mark is writing to the Romans, perhaps to a certain area of Romans who actually knew the man in his account. Now, we also got that some people are good with numbers and others are not as good with numbers. Some people just can't get away from numbers, like an auditor. Or a tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector. And he's more concerned with the numbers. It's a number game with him. He can't leave out a number. And so he includes two. So let's get on with our account here in chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people... Comma, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, this says a lot. Because I ask the question is, how does he know he's the son of David? Well, there's a good reason for that. He's a temple man. He can't read, but they must have had a service where the blind men are read to the Torah. I don't think they had Braille yet. And in the Torah and in the other accounts of the uh, temple, you can find out who the lineage of, and that's why the Bible proves to be true, who the lineage was of David, because that's where the Messiah was coming from. So what is he yelling out here, right? Son of David, possible son of, of God, the Messiah. And many charged him that she'd hold his peace, but he cried more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Again, he calls out, thou son of David. 
And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be thou of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. So the man comes to him, and he, casting away his garments, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole, and immediately he received sight and followed Jesus in the way. You see, skeptic, if you're looking in, if you're trying to tear apart God's world, word, here's your opportunity. You can follow Jesus. You see, this word of God narrows Jesus down to a specific person at a specific time. I'm doing a thing on prophecy, checking on that. Because there's nothing more than Jesus wants than to you to read his word with an open mind and say, Jesus, I need you. I can't do it without you. I know you died for my sins. Jesus, come into my life and save me. And at that request, he will. And then you can pick up your cross and follow Jesus and say, May Jesus increase as I decrease.